Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bridge Side Podcast, and it's episode 60 of the show. I'm your boy, the HD, the BSP. Like, share, comment on the video, of course, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications to receive the updates from the podcast, and you can follow us on social media, I'm at PSP on Twitter, BitsidePod on Instagram, listen to this on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform available, you're welcome. This episode is going to be, you know, short and sweet and different, because we're going to be talking about more transfer talk than usual, but before of that, uh, let's talk some news first, and let's... Uh, start from uh, Spain, where the Copa del Rey draw has been held, of course, and the quarterfinal has been um, revealed. It's going to be as follows. Granada facing Barcelona, Real Betis facing Athletic Club, Levante faces Villarreal, and Almeria, the only non-La Liga side that stayed in the competition, is going to be facing Sevilla. The matches are supposedly going to be taking place between the 3rd and the 4th of February um, next, um, that's going to be next midweek, of course, with Barcelona, of course, going to be travelling to Granada. Villarreal going to be travelling to face Levante. Athletic Club is going to go to um, Sevilla to, uh, Sevilla to face Betis, and um, Sevilla are going to be travelling to Almeria to face Almeria. Um, from Spain uh, to Germany, and Bayern Munich confirmed or Hansi Flick confirmed, rather, that Javi Martinez and Jan Goretzka tested positive for COVID-19. Of course, they won't be available for the clash uh, today against Hoffenheim. Uh, Quarantine Tolisso as well is going to be miss- missing from that clash because of injury. Um, Benzema and Eden Hazard in Spain back that again, uh, leading Real Madrid squad uh, to face Levante with the continued absence of Sergio Ramos. Um, from Italy, Ibrahimovic and Lukaku received both one match ban after the heated confrontation in the Milan derby. Both players were booked in the first half after clashing towards the end of the first half and now both are banned for the respective for the next respective Coppa Italia clash. I thought it would apply in the league but for some reason it isn't. Uh, the suspension is only um, you know uh, available for the Coppa um, Italia which in this you know situation is not going to be Milan, it will be Inter so Lukaku is going to be missing the semi-final against Juventus, while AC Milan uh, are going to be doing without Ibrahimovic in the next match they will play in the Cup, supposedly next season, if Ibrahimovic is still there. To England now, and the biggest signing of the day, probably, and maybe of the transfer window, the greatest signing ever. See the sarcasm there. West Ham confirmed the signing of Jesse Lingard, former Man United, uh, formerly of Man United, or still of Man United, on loan until the end of the season. The 28 year old has been on the periphery, really, of Oni Gunnar Solskjaer. We mentioned yesterday he only. Uh, played three matches this season, two in the uh, FA Cup and one in the League Cup, so there's nothing really there for him. Uh, he was feeding all the other scraps, and he was bored, obviously, of, of not playing, so he decided, let's join West Ham, and West Ham are doing really well this season, so they might do with an addition like Jesse Lingard, who, for all the criticism and maybe the abuse that he gets on social media, I think he's one of the... Uh, the players that, you know, has the potential to be something even um, even better. Uh, Aubameyang is going to be missing Arsenal clash against Man United also on Saturday in England because of the quarantine rules. Travelled abroad, of course, uh, because of his unwell mother. The Gabonist striker um, returns, uh, is going to be uh, quarantining for about, you know, uh, 10 days or so before returning to action, of course. But and uh, unless he provides a negative tests uh, for for COVID nineteen, he will be clear, uh, of course, uh, to face Wolves. If he does that, if he doesn't, he's going to be keep kept on quarantine probably until next Saturday. Um, Thomas Party has passed apparently the late test uh, for fitness in that game as well, uh, game against United that is, to recover for the thigh problem just in the game uh, for the time for the United's visit to Emirates. Um, also Kieran Tierney uh, is expected to have late fitness tests uh, to see who is available for the game. Emil Smith Rowe um, also after some muscular discomfort and a calf problem for Kieran Tierney and muscular discomfort for Emil Smith Rowe, we'll see what happened with those um, with those two. Still in England, and uh, Premier League is going to be 
concu- uh, you know, introducing, uh, introducing concussion substitutions in, in starting from February 6th. That's, of course, the uh, rule that was approved last week. And the top flight is set to be becoming the first division in the uh, in the world to test out this measure. The Athletic, according the, to them, they claim that from match day 23, teams will have two permanent concussion substitutions per game. The fears were raised over the welfare of players earlier this season. The number of sickening head clashes, of course, the incident between David Luiz and Raul Jimenez being the biggest sort of example of that as well. Uh, the imminent arrival of concussion substitutions probably signals that, you know, they would be at the at the forefront of protecting footballers, which is, you know, what you expect really teams to do to protect their players. The test still requires a green light from the International Football Association uh, board, IFAB, uh, the game's lawmakers, but there are not expected to be any difficulties in that. I think they could easily understand uh, why, and maybe this sort of measure is going to be applied even more. Maybe when football goes to normal, we will return, you know, with four substitutions, like three normal ones during the game, you know, the extra time one, and we have this sort of fifth substitution as a um, as a as a precaution measure against uh, against concussion, which is a good thing. Uh, finishing off and in uh, Chelsea, where Roman Abramovich has dished out 100 and 20 million pounds, 112 and a half, sorry, million pounds in compensation for the sacked Chelsea boss Frank uh, Frank Lampard and the other sacked bosses as well. That's a number that is not shocking exactly. Um, uh, the club had not yet triggered the contract, any new contract extension beyond the remaining six months of his old deal. Lampard collected two million pounds compensation rather than projected six million. Uh, only Rafa Benitez and Goose Hiddink, who were out of contract and cost Roman sweet nothing went cheaper, while Mauricio Sarri Juventus brought a club a little conversation that might soften um, the blow of all the expensive exits. The next lowest handshake was afforded to Avram Grant, remember that guy? A drifling £5.2 million. Jose Mourinho and Conte topped out a more than £20 million each, with the Italian's personal £9 million check boosted to a one-bullet record of £26.6 million by the removal of his huge bank from staff, but plus the legal bills as well. Jose edges him overall, however, with another 8.3 from the second of his two golden goodbyes. Um... That's a lot of money for, for coaches. That is, that is just a lot of compensation. And Roman Abramovich, I think, is going to be paying a lot of that in the near future too. So I guess that that's going to be a problem anyway. Enough of the news and let's talk um, something else really. Again, I mentioned earlier that uh, this episode is going to be short and sweet really. I'm not going to be um, talking a lot. We did the preview of the weekend yesterday. You can check that out. Um, and I think there's no need really to, um, to re-preview um, what's going to be happening on a Saturday and, and Sunday. So we're starting to talk about the transfer window and as we're nearing to a close really of that um, of that window. It looks like the, you know, the characteristic, the biggest characteristic from this transfer window is everybody's in talks with everybody or the fact that there's a lot of loan uh, going on uh, in, in the business. And obviously we can understand that from a financial point of view. There's not a lot of teams that could have big money to sign players. The pandemic affected a lot of players in terms, you know, financially. They cannot be the same anymore. Um, you, you don't see you don't see teams going out and spending hundreds and seventies and eighty million euros on players anymore, unless you're Chelsea, of course. But that is, I think, it was an, an exception rather than the rule, because looking at the uh, you know at the market in the summer, it wasn't exactly moving big. Um, you know, there there is like literally six to seven teams in the world that are really linked with all the transfers that you can hear about. The big ones, that is. Um, you know, Bayern, Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, um, Man United, Man City probably, and Liverpool, you could add to that as well. And maybe you can add Chelsea, you know, creeping in because the the big money they paid um, last summer, but they really are keen on signing some players. And these are the seven or eight sides that, you know, the, um, the transfer talk or the transfer window is really concised in as far as big signings are concerned. Not a lot of moves from those teams either. And it's more about players leaving 
those clubs rather than players entering those clubs. I mean, every one of those teams that I mentioned probably has a player that is linked with a move outside of that club. Uh, United have Pogba, um, Liverpool have uh, have Salah, Mbappe for PSG, Ramos for uh, Real Madrid, Messi for Barcelona. Of course, it's a, it's been a saga and it's a long saga for Messi at Barcelona and seemingly it's not over yet because uh, from the uh, reports, apparently he's learning French, um, which is, you know, not a good sign um, when you're living in Catalonia and, you know, you already speak the Catalan language and the Spanish language, why you would learn French anyway. Um, Bayern has David Alaba, uh, you know, Man City potentially have, um, potentially have Aguero to leave um, in, in, in the summer because of his, you know, contract situation, because of his age, or because of his lack of fitness, and maybe he would love a new challenge. Um, but those are the clubs that are involved pretty much in everything at the moment. Though, I could say, you could eliminate some of those, really. You could eliminate probably Real Madrid and Barcelona for the moment. The finances are not there. Barcelona are in 1.3 billion euros of debt, so you couldn't exactly expect them to pay big money unless they sell Messi. Not unless they sell players, unless they sell Messi. Because they're not going to get any amount of significant money in any other player at the club aside from Messi. They cannot, pretty much they cannot market any player outside from Messi in that club. They, they, they will try maybe and sell some, you know, youngsters, maybe some other big names. But I don't think in any way, shape or form that they have any marketable name that could bring them a big sum rather than uh, Messi. For in Real Madrid, you know, the Sergio Ramos situation um, has been brewing in the background for a while, then it came to the forefront, and it's becoming really, really clear that Sergio Ramos is not happy with his uh, current situation at the club, you know, the, the relationship with uh, Florentino Martinez seemingly is deteriorating if the reports are to be believed from the Spanish press, and he's going to be another legend, um, you know, being not booted, but being, I think, iced out from that club. That is what I want to say. He's being iced out from that club really pretty slowly, and if he goes out, it's going to be... Um, in, in a shameful way. A lot of legends in Real Madrid left the club that way. You know, um, you know Raul, uh, Fernando Hierro, Luis Figo, all of those left before him. And they were captains of the club. Like, uh, uh, it's probably the same situation. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo also, when his relationship with Florentino Perez started to look like it's on the downhill, he preferred to let him go. So, Real Madrid are on a crossroads here with Sergio Ramos. Uh, if, if they, you know, they want him to stay, they need to accept his um, his demands. And the long story short of his uh, of his contract story is the fact that the other players have been, you know, um, have been seeing improvements in their wages, increases in their wages, while Sergio Ramos, the captain, hasn't. And in fact, Sergio Ramos's wages have decreased by thirty percent. Of course, the pay cuts that. Almost all the clubs had to undo and go through uh, because of the pandemic and the losses and the financial huge losses of the uh, pandemic and the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona are probably the two most hit clubs in the world. Real Madrid, not just the pandemic and the loss of finances, also the reinventment or the renewing of the stadium at Santiago Bernabeu is costing them a fortune as well. So you can imagine exactly how tight um, the budget is. Um, at the um, at, at the moment, uh, from a PSG now, and um, the story obviously is Mbappe. It might be Neymar later, but I think at the moment it's Mbappe. Um, the talks about him being unsatisfied with the club, uh, chased by Liverpool, by Real Madrid, um, potentially also by. Man City, they're entering the race maybe, but I think the biggest favourites are either Real Madrid or Liverpool at the moment. Real Madrid, I think, have sort of denied the possibility to sign Mbappe because that is going to be requiring a lot of money and a lot of wages they don't have at the moment to sign. Liverpool, they may try and take him for a fair price, and that fair price might be you know, around 95, maybe 100 million euros, which if the club, you know, shake the uh, the piggy bank a little bit, they could have, although Liverpool as well are, you know, one of the teams that um, that had a huge financial losses because uh, of the pandemic and the no fans and the no fans era. Um, still, it's going to be a big coup for whoever signs um, that guy. Um, Bayern Munich, David Alaba, this, this story is still going on. Um, you know, the, um, the, the latest reports 
denied and his father denied the fact that um, he's, he's leaving uh, the club for Real Madrid uh, necessarily. Of course, he's leaving the club, that's for sure, but the contract is not signed yet. I'm assuming it will be for Real Madrid, but just the fact that they need to wait until the summer, trying to make this a prolonged saga, maybe trying to milk it for all it's worth for the media. But I think we all know that he's leaving the club for Real Madrid, pretty much. And there have also been rumours that um, Sergio Ramos is going to be going to Bayern, so it's going to be probably a potential swap deal. Um, maybe it's going to be uh, good for everyone at this stage of, of his career. Sergio Ramos probably at Bayern is going to be a good addition, you know, good experience experienced addition to help the likes of Nicolas Zule, maybe Lucas Hernandez, maybe add another young defender. I mean, imagine if Bayern Munich, but, you know, bring in Ramos and then bring in Upa Meccano. Wouldn't that be some nice uh, student-teacher kind of combination there at the, uh, at the club anyway? So, um, also, there is a couple of big signees that are rumoured as well here and there. There is, um, you know, Holland being chased by a lot of clubs. There is um, the Guerra being chased by a lot of clubs. Um, you know, movements in all across the um, all across the globe chasing and, you know, chasing time really, racing with time, trying to sign players, trying to sign, um, you know, players in the, in the quickest deals possible really, and because of the finances, most of them are on loans really. There's a lot of deals on loans out there, um, that you can, uh, that you can see, um, you know, um, Jesse Lingard just went to West Ham, that's on loan, um, you know, um, Chelsea, you know, Chelsea, um, I mean, probably Liverpool are starting to scramble for a centre-back um, as well. So there's not a lot of traffic as much as people coming and going. But there is a lot of traffic in terms of the negotiations, the managers, the agents trying to get deals done by deadline day. And those deals aren't exactly big, but it's just, you know, pieces and bits that they need. Some teams, I mean, some teams just like to spend for the sake of spending. Um, you know, for Kaito Mori, as I, as I mentioned on the uh, on the talk of loan deals going to Milan, on loan as well. Swali Haumeti, the same, uh, in, in the same side, went from Torino to Milan on loan as well. So there's just a lot of loan deals taking place. And I think that looks like the best situation at the moment. It's either loan deal or wait for the player to become a free agent um, so that you can find him and you can get him on a free, which is a much easier option than just, you know, settling for simply, um, simply paying a big price for the players. So just to sum up, it, it's been a quiet transfer market in terms of big names. There's not a shocking transfer from side to side. There's nothing like that. But certainly, there is a lot of movement for the next summer. That is clear for, this, for, the, for the upcoming summer. And the upcoming Euro is probably going to be a big part of that as well. Uh, of, of that movement, depending on how the teams and the players perform in that competition. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to see, you know, Holland there, which, you know, pains me really, because I thought that was the first kind of competition where we would see the new Cristiano slash, slash uh, Messi rivalry, um, you know, uh, in there, the new uh, sort of bipolar opposition in that, in the football world. Um, anyway, I think the the final idea, I would say, the sum of it all is, you know, the loan deal seems to be the uh, the fashion at the moment in the transfer window, and the um, and the here and the you know the talk of the hour is loan deals, and because of the finances, again, you don't expect big signings, don't expect big movements from any club. Uh, in in Europe, certainly the summer is going to be more interesting. We'll see, you know, where Messi is going to leave because I'm assuming he will leave. We'll see if Mbappe leaves, if Ramos leaves, uh, Real Madrid, where Alaba is going to end up, and we'll see if Holland can be persuaded by the likes of Chelsea and Man City, and we'll see all of that um, uh, unfolding. Uh, that's it for me and for this episode. I was with HD of the PSP. Follow me on social media. I'm at PSP on Twitter, Pitch Site World on Instagram. You can. Uh, like, share, comment on the video what you think, subscribe to the channel, and of course enable notifications to receive all the updates. And finally, you can listen to this on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform if you want it later on. I was your boy, the HD of the PSP, and until the next time, I'll see you soon.